I found an antique sewing machine, forgotten and alone. I touched her rusty wheel and knew I'd take her home. I brought her to my farm in an Amish neighborhood where simple living's value. She'd be loved and understood I put her on a treadle stand I coaxed her wheel to turn I felt her joy and easing With my study and concern I cleaned her and I oiled her Showed her off to all my friends Repaired her hurts and years of use And let her sew again Welcome back to my sewing table, actually my sewing machine table to be precise, and got Rose back up here. Last time I had put the decals on her and then I just took her aside to my painting workshop area and put a couple, you know, good coats of clear coat on her. And now she is back, she is dry, and I'm ready to start reassembling her. So um, the first thing I'm gonna do is remove all of her masking. She's got masking tape and paper stuck all over the place in her. So I'm gonna pull all of that out so I can get ready. Alright, so at this point I need to decide what I'm going to start doing first. And before I start putting everything on here, I just wanted to show you um, when I was painting her. Apparently I didn't get as much coverage right here as other places. It's a little bit darker. But you know what? That's okay. I kind of like it not looking like it was painted in a factory. You know, it has that country look to it. We're going to call it the country look. So anyhow, let me set some things aside here out of the way. And I think the first thing I'm going to do is put the wheel back on. But before I do, I don't know if you can see a little bit of the paint. I got some paint around here. So before I put the wheel on, I'm going to get my wire brush on my Dremel and just clean that paint off. So of course, the first thing I do is grab my protective eye gear to put on over my glasses because Using these wire brushes, these little wires just go everywhere. Okay, that looks a lot better to me. So I have a box full of Ziploc baggies with different parts and their assorted screws. So for this piece, I have that out. I have, of course, my wheel. I'm going to slide on here. Please slide on. Okay. There is a washer. This little washer here, and actually that's kind of dirty, so I am going to clean that really quick with some degreaser and my wire brush on my Dremel also. So next is coming my washer and then I just screw it on here. A lot of times it's easier if you have your machine standing up on its head so you have gravity working with you, but I am going to give it a shot here. Come on, line up for me. Okay, Oops. so now that I have it screwed on, there's a little screw right here I need to tighten up. Give me a second, turn you this way. Okay, and I'll know that I have this on right if I can turn my screw about, or my, I keep forgetting the name of this, like a stop motion something or other. I can't even remember the name right now. But if I can turn it about a quarter turn, then I have it on right, so. I am good. Okay, so with that wheel on, I'm gonna move my light around here. So with the wheel on, if I turn it, I can see that everything 
up here and my nose is turning right, so that is good for me. I'm gonna go ahead and work on the needle bar right now before I even get started on all that stuff underneath. Actually, I changed my mind. Before they do that, I need to put my little belt guard piece on and the screw is in here. Sometimes I just leave them in place because that way I don't lose them, plus they get painted. Okay, that's, well, I think it is what it is right here. So now I am good, I got my little belt guard on. So now I'm gonna go ahead and focus on my needle bar. I'm thinking that, um, I took a lot of pictures before, but I'm trying to remember the exact order that I took things off and reversing that is gonna be tricky for me. So um, what I'm gonna do is put this on first. It goes right in there. And what I have is a little lid with a few drops of sewing machine oil on it and a little paintbrush. And I am just going to lightly paint with my little paintbrush a little bit of sewing machine oil on the threads. Not so much it's gonna be drippy, but enough that it'll protect it. And let's see how I can do this. So, you know what? I need to grease this little slot. There's a little slot here. This piece has a little bearing on it. And this bearing slides around in that slot. So I am actually going to try to Get some oil in here all the way around before I put this piece on just to make sure it stays stays nice and happy. Alrighty, got the little track oiled. So I'm gonna slide this piece in, setting this bearing in that track. And up on top, I have this big, big, big screw that goes in here. Okay, so there you go. It's gonna move my little thread take up lever. Huh? Look at me using the lingo, thread take up lever up and down. I think that is good. So let me, um, actually, now that I have that done, I'm gonna go ahead and put that little cover on it. So I am back up here and all right, right here, there is a little post. And what I need to do now is I have a little bearing that's gonna go on here. Just pop that on. I've got this piece. And this little slider goes in the side. There's a little slot for it. I need to get everything lined up here. Got a couple tiny, tiny little screws here that I just have on a magnet. I have a whole bunch of magnets that I just kind of use as tiny part keepers. So I need to use these screws to hold this part in place. Um, let me get them in. First this little guy here and then the tiny one. I'm not going to be setting the proper needle bar height right now. I just want to get it in there. So I'm going to go ahead and put this little screw in. Um, but later on when I'm adjusting the needle bar height, I can just back that out and then, you know, adjust this up and down. This little nut goes down at the bottom. Let's thread it down here.
Good morning. It is the next day, and I'm going to try to um, not use my clip on mic since I'm sitting so close to my camera here. So, I want to show you what we've got last night. I think that putting this on here, this is where the shuttle goes. That was my last step. Um, my next one is getting this bar on, and unfortunately, I did not take a photo of this. So, I've got all of my pieces. I'm just going to use my intuition. A little trial and error to figure out how it all gets put back together and come along and watch. But actually before I do that I need to put my stitch length regulator stuff together and so that's where this little piece comes in. I'm just going to slide all the way up here and come out up here at the top. So just give me a second. Okay, I think I got that stitch length, everything reassembled there. So now I'm going to go ahead and connect the bar. foot set in. I don't know if it's at the exact right height yet. I can adjust that later. Okay. And this is where we are right now. So let me get some of this finishing stuff done now. I'm just about down to shiny plates and bobbin winders. Thank you. 
I need to raise the feed dog height down below. Now that she is working again, I need to wash her because honestly, having grungy, greasy fingers on a white machine, I've left a lot of fingerprints. So I'm gonna wash her, clean her up, but now I'm gonna build a little box for her just so that I can actually use her because um, it needs to be up off the floor. So the first thing I'm gonna do is measure her. So excited, I almost forgot her bobbin winder. The last most exciting little piece. The bobbin that I used to test her out was the original old thread that I found in her. So who knows how old that is. This little piece is gonna go right here.
knew I'd take her home. I walked her to my farm in an Amish neighborhood where simple living's valued. She'd be loved and understood. I put her on a treadle stand and coaxed her wheel to turn. I felt her joy and easing with my study and concern. I cleaned her and I owed her, showed her off to all my friends, repaired the hurts of years of years, and left her so again.